Yep. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this issue. Daredevil twenty eight. Um, Ring the bell, do the thing. Ding, I'm ding. doing it right now. Right now, to, it's it, it deserves two. Do I hear it? Do I hear it? No. Two. It gets two gongs because it is the pick of the week. This rarely happens for both of us. Double, uh, pick. double pick of the week. Um, yeah, dude, this issue was fucking <clears throat> fantastic. <laughs> um, Chip Zdarsky continues to interweave amazing storytelling on top of talking about social norms and just dealing with in-depth psyches of the human being. You know what I mean? Like really not just scratching the surface with social norms. Um, and everybody like in this issue, basically we find out that everybody's got issues, right? Like, and we know that, but y- you know, this book makes you look at Kingpin a completely different way, at least for part of the book right. <laughs> until, the, until the very end. Um, mm. You know, we get three stories in this book. We get Kingpin basically feeling like shit that he put Typhoid Mary through the situation he put she he put her through with the King in Black event. You've got um, Electra dealing with emotions that she really has kind of packed away in her psyche that she doesn't really want to deal with, and and this girl that she kind of pseudo adopted uh during the king and black event because her mother killed herself or got killed not killed herself her mother was killed (laughs) as a symbiote and then you've got murdoch who's in prison and now he's questioning everything he's questioning why he's even in prison he's not only looking outside of himself but he's looking outside of everybody in the prison he's starting to essentially connect emotionally with the prisoners and the prison itself while he's there. And he's kind of, I mean, he's questioning his life as a lawyer. He's questioning his life as a superhero, as a person. Right. And, you know, at first read, you're kind of like, okay, I get it. But then if you read it again, there's so many layers to this book and it's, it's all about the human psyche and and really how our brain works and i'm gonna let you take over from here because i feel like you can deconstruct it as a hell of a lot better than i can Um, but i will i'll I'll say this just real quick the um the not the not the not the prisoner that saved his life in king of black but the other prisoner that he put away um i forget his name uh anyway the way that all plays out is just masterful in this book yes uh so again i don't (laughs) you know i i think we try to not make it uh it too in your face um our uh outside influences that bring into comic books but chips it's really it's really hard to not do that with this book like it's it's really really hard hard to not do that with this book so um Chip Zdarsky is somehow in one comic book is tackling um, mental health, uh, the problem with the American incarceration system, and you know death of a loved one, and uh, the humanity of imprisoned peoples, and he literally somehow does all that in twenty one pages. Mm-hmm. Um, the interaction that we get uh, between. Um, uh, Murdoch and the prison uh, psychiatrist is absolutely astounding. Um, she basically tells him that, you know, he's, um, you know, I don't want to say living a lie, but, you know, a lot of what he's doing is that he's not understanding that he's still coming from a place of privilege and mm. that um, he's not he's not understanding uh, the way that they are and that when he gets out of jail, things are going to be normal for him. He's, mm-hmm. He still has the privilege. He gets to be in jail with a mask on and go by the name Daredevil. Right. And he thinks that he's on the same level as the other inmates that are incarcerated with him. Mm-hmm. Um, and just having Daredevil, you know, Daredevil's all about righteousness. 
and sometimes Daredevil does wrong and he tries to make up for it. That's obviously what we're seeing here. But like that's always been Daredevil's thing, right? Is like he tries to be righteous. Mm -hmm. And she's basically telling him like, you're not, you're actually being kind of a dick. Um, and I really like that, you know, he's being called out on that. Um, trying to figure out that guy's name. Cause like that's in this entire issue. Like, yeah, Kingpin's got big feelings and he feels depressed that he put, uh, typhoid through that and he realizes that typhoid is really dealing with some like big inner demons within her brain like yeah you know she's got multiple voices in her mind and then she's got noel who noel is a total mind fuck right so you take yeah. you take that mental illness issue that she has and then you turn it upside down with a cosmic entity that is the void that is death personified like that's fucking heavy you know yeah, yeah. uh the, and the guy's name is neil by the way neil okay so after we get the opening segment with Kingpin and Typhoid and with Elektra, we get, you know, Murdoch is having lunch and Neil shows up and is like, hey, you know, do you mind if I sit here? And and Murdoch kind of blows him off like, hey, you're a criminal. You're different. Like, I'm not supposed to be in here with you. Like, he has well, that privilege. I, I do think it's important to say that Neil is in jail. We find out that Neil is in jail for double homicide right yeah 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 no yeah for sure like he's not a good he's not he's not a uh, a good guy um I, yeah but i i think it's important for another reason but go ahead right so he kind of blows him off at lunch he's just kind of like hey like i gotta go take care of something you know and i think he actually gets called on like he's like he has to go back and talk to the therapist um and then after their session he hears you know him being you know having that's the hearing that he has he hears him he hears Neil getting his ass kicked. Yeah. Um, and so he goes and he intervenes and he tries to save Neil and he kind of does like he, he breaks up the fight and he doesn't kill anybody, but he, he breaks some bones. <laughs> um, and then later on, you know, Matt Murdoch goes to sleep and then he gets called again to the therapist's office. And she's like, Hey, just wanted to give you the heads up. Neil killed himself. Like he committed suicide. Yeah. And like you just see Daredevil just I mean, you know, he got hit by a ton of bricks, you know, and he he starts thinking back to what a couple hours ago of of how he treated Neil and how his perception of how what was going on with Neil in the bathroom, you know, how that was, you know, how it was perceived in his mind. Um what were you going to say about it? Well, I was gonna say that um, I think I think Neil being a murderer um, is very important because we get to this point where Matt finds out that Neil has committed suicide. Neil is dead, um, you know, and Neil is in this place. Part of the reason why that he is in this place is because Murdoch has prosecuted him he's the one that helped put him in jail now of course neil is responsible for his own actions mm -hmm. but i think that this really challenges um this really dualistic thinking that um uh, americans have especially that prisoner equals um less human less deserving of respect less deserving mm -hmm. of friendship and like I don't know. I really felt for for not only for Daredevil, but I also felt for Neil. And mm. to say that you feel for someone that's a the murderer is a challenging feat as a writer to do in a twenty one page comic. Um, but it's also a really powerful message that mm. you can you can hold your view of a prisoner as like this guy did something wrong and he should be held responsible for it. But I can also feel bad for him that he gets the shit kicked out of him in, in prison so much that he wants to kill himself and eventually does. Yeah, that's yeah. When I <laughs> uh, to me like and that's mid mid to almost towards the end of the book that that happens. Mm -hmm. And like immediately when that happened, I was like, pick of the week, pick of the week. I'm sorry, pick of the week. Um, and then we had the other part of the, you know, the end of the part of the book, which was Electra telling this little girl who had lost her mother, like, hey, suck it up. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. wipe those tears and meet me in the gym when you're ready to confront your feelings. So the spectrum of how you deal with your feelings, how you deal with loss is, I mean, it's all over the fucking place in this book. It's just, it's, the spectrum is wide. 
in 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 full um and then <laughs> we cut back to to um kingpin who is just you know he go he he takes what he's learned he's taken this new idea of um uh, sadness <laughs> and realization of what typhoid is going through and he does what kingpin does and he turns it into rage he turns it into vengeance yeah and so who's first on his list daredevil and not just matt murdoch but oh. <laughs> both daredevils so he's put a hit at the end of this issue he's put a hit out on daredevil in jail and our new daredevil electra and the issue ends with matt getting poisoned <laughs> And that, you know, that was supposed to be, you know, for, I I think for a nonchalant reader, the oh shit moment. But to me, it was just, just the social commentary, like you said, on mental illness and on loss and just perception of identity within the prison system. Um, It was, this was, I just, there was a lot of commentary in this book and uh, I just think I I applaud it. And then on top of that, Chichetto again, fucking killing it on the artwork uh yeah you know, i've never again i haven't read a uh, an issue of daredevil i was like no that didn't that didn't do it for me like it's <laughs> every time i'm like hell yeah we get another daredevil issue uh i do i do want to say what there's one more thing in this book that i thought was very profound and very important um throughout the whole um book you you constantly hear people being asked are you okay are you okay? That's the name uh-huh. of the issue is, are you okay? Mm. Um, especially uh, Matt Murdock is being asked by the therapist consistently over and over. Are you okay? Are you okay? And he's like, yes, like I'm fine. Like this is a waste of time. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Like I don't need help. I don't need help. I'm fine. And in the end, after he finds out that Neil has killed himself, he, he looks at her and just says, she says, are you okay? And he says, no, I'm not. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's really important uh, to see a superhero admit that, they're not okay and that they also need help yeah and that, and that, like you said like that speaks to saying to society like and i think it's kind of shunned sure. to ask for help whether it's you know you know a mental issue or even if it's if it's just in general like asking for help like us as a society kind of put things on our shoulders and just kind of push through and whether that's with work or with family or with even issues that you're dealing with as a singular person. Um, and like you said, I think that that's very important that a superhero is like, no, I'm, <laughs> I am broken. I am broken and I need help. And I think that also plays into, like you said, he's a, he's a, a warrior for justice. He's a, he's, he's deep in his faith. And I think he just kind of learned a little bit more about his faith because like, that's kind of the identity of faith is that you can say, that you're not okay, that, that, that you are broken and that you can, you, there's a way to get back up. And I think that's, you know, a very, a very small subtext under that as well. But, um, overall the book is telling you that it's okay to not be okay. And, and it's okay to ask for help when you need it. And it doesn't always happen immediately. Sometimes it, it's a process like Murdoch finds out, like sometimes you have to be constantly barraged with the question, are you okay to finally realize that you're not um yeah overall this book was fantastic (laughs) yeah this was not just my pick of the week by the way i i would genuinely genuinely say this is in my top 10 best single issues of all time damn well yeah i'm assuming you're playing noise yes (laughs) either way that's daredevil 28 if you're not reading this right now what are you doing with your life get on it get the trade or wait until the Omnibus comes out. I know the hardcover for the first 11 issues or 10 issues is coming out soon. So, yeah, yeah I want to pick that up. I wouldn't wait that long. I'd get the trades and then just wait for the Omni. There you go. 